Hey everybody, how are you doing today? I certainly hope you all had a wonderful Sunday. I have been feeling under the weather all day. And, um, I think I made the mistake of, um, drinking some milk that was a little bit too warm last night. I had fallen asleep while I was eating dinner. And I woke up, and I drank the milk like a dummy, and I ate the additional hamburger that was on my plate like a dummy, and I've been sick all day. And uh, it's just my own fault. I mean, I don't know why I do crazy crap like that. <laughs> I need to learn that if I fall asleep, just throw it away. Don't eat it. You're going to make yourself sick, right? <laughs> so even my IBS medicine has not been helping me today, so... It's been kind of rough. Now, um, late in the day, um, the second part of the interview room with Chris Madonna, he has a YouTube channel, and he is a retired homicide detective, and he has the show on where he interviews people. Of all kinds. He interviews serial killers, ministers, all kinds of people. And he um, did a two-parter on the Summer Wells disappearance. Summer Wells is a five-year-old little girl from Rogersville, Tennessee, which is in East Tennessee, Hawkins County, on June 15th. She disappeared from her home. The story is um, she has a mother, Candace, father, Don, and three boys. I think three boys. Yeah. And um, the story is that um, they went swimming to a swimming hole. They went to a couple of stores. They came home. Summer helped her mama and her grandma transplanting some flowers. Then the story is that um, Candace watched Summer go in the house. Candace went into the house and told the boys to watch Summer. All right, that's the story. And then, we're not really sure of the time frame, okay? There seems to be a time frame between 3.30 and 6.30 that we don't know what really transpired. But apparently, uh, Candace was out of, out of touch with the kids or something. I don't know where she was. But she had gone into the house and was looking for Summer. She said it was three to five minutes after Summer went in the house. We don't really know that as a fact. All we know is she went into the house looking for her. The boys said that she was down in the basement. Candace went down in the basement and Summer was nowhere to be found. Now, there is a door down there in the basement that goes to the outside. It locks on the inside and the outside. And it's very easy to get to the lock and turn it. So I'm thinking even if it was locked, I truly believe that Summer would have been capable of opening that door and going outside. Now, the second half showed all of the property. And the most shocking part was that the main road is not far from their property. They could actually see the main road from, from the side of the house, which is something a lot of us were not expecting, all right? You know, we're all thinking, oh, it's a remote area, you know, surrounded by forest, and, you know, there's no way anybody could you know, come up that driveway without being noticed, uh, anybody could have come up from the main road to get to Summer if they wanted to. It was, it is a steep hill, 
But it's probably not impossible for some people to get up there and onto the property. Donald has said that he's had people lurking on his property in the past. So there have been stories of people camping out on their property. Uh, I think they've got about 11 acres there. So, yeah, this second part really put it in perspective because we're all thinking, okay, they're in this remote area. Nobody's around. Nobody can get there. The only way they can get up is through the driveway, which is a very long driveway. They have about nine dogs, and there was no, no barking dogs at all. Now, if a stranger comes up on that property, they will bark. When Chris the McDonough came up, in his chop, the dogs went crazy. So those dogs are not as tame as Candace said in their initial interview. The big thing about this case is that in the initial interview with the parents, Candace was obviously under the influence of some sort of drugs. Could have been a sedative to calm her down, but she was very matter of fact, no tears, no upset at all. Just, you know, matter of factly telling the facts. And the big red flag in this whole case is the, hus is the husband and father, Don. Don uses religion to hide behind when he's talking about all of this. He talks like Summer is dead. He says, I will see her again in the resurrection. Somebody took her. He is convinced that somebody took her and that she's dead. Which is very alarming to people, you know. They're not crying on camera. They're not acting, you know in despair or anything like most parents would do. So of course it's a big red flag to everybody that uh, they're not acting normally. What's going on here? What's going on with Don and his religious stuff and talking about the resurrection and she was definitely abducted and she could already be dead. You know, statistics say that uh, when a whole lot of time goes by, you know, Kids are usually not alive. This has been going on for weeks, and he has been doing rants on Facebook. In interviews, he's just been giving out red flags everywhere. And everybody is just... So many people are convinced that these parents are involved with the disappearance of their daughter. Me, I don't know, okay? I've just been taking it all in listening to other creators, you know, on YouTube talking about it. And I really, you know, I, the red flags do, you know, bother me, but I just don't really know what to think, all right? So then comes this interview, the interview room, the interview room with Chris McDonough. He goes to Rogersville. His first interview is with a friend named Allie. Second interview is with Hunter, who is who Allie's son, Hunter, who is friends with Candace and Summer. These two tell stories about what happened that day. Hunter was with them. He told his version of it. Totally different version than from what Candace tells us in this second part. So this is like, who do you believe in this thing? It seems like everybody is telling different stories. And when people tell different stories, that's bad. That's a big red flag. That They're lying. Somebody is lying. And why are they lying? So this is why everybody on Facebook and YouTube have pretty much come to the conclusion that Don and Candace are involved with this. Such outlandish things have been put out on social media about them. 
they sold her for drugs. They sold her for human trafficking. Human trafficking people came to get her. Uh, pedophiles came to get her. All right, so many weird things going on with these people. Now, the second part shows the property and the house. The big shocker in the second part was how close their property is to the main road. The main road isn't that far from their property. It is just down the hill and you can see the main road. Anybody could come up that property if they wanted to and hide anywhere. There were so many crooks and grannies on that property that anybody could have hidden. If, you know, if somebody really wanted to take her, they could have come up there and waited for the right moment. Very, very possible. So this kind of puts, uh, you know, a little bit of a dent in everybody's assumptions that Don and Candace did something to her. They could have, but we don't know. There are just too many possibilities in this case. And the thing that really, really got me, that was the first big revelation that really, really hit home with, just, just hit me. I'm like, oh my God, look how close that road is. Anybody could have come up, you know. Despite all the different stories from everybody, we know something, something has gone on there that they are covering. Because Candace claims that everything that Hunter said was a lie. Everything that he said was a lie. I'm not going to go into it. You can watch it if you want. But the horrible part of it was the house. All right. The house was set up so strange. You came in, there was a long room, like kind of like a, a living room, because you're walking into a living room. And in the corner were bunk beds. Then you go to the right and there's a huge room, which apparently is the kitchen. Beyond the kitchen, you can see another room which is probably the laundry room because I saw uh, portable clothes racks in there and clothes were hung up. And the kitchen seemed to be the, the main room. Uh, there was a big screen TV up on the wall and every inch of those counter places and table were covered with stuff. You couldn't even see the tabletop. You couldn't even see the counters. These people had so much stuff in their house. Now, um, I've heard people say that their house is filthy. Um, how, they, how could they tell if it's filthy? There's so much stuff everywhere. That's not necessarily filthy. It's just a lot of stuff, you know. And uh, I don't know. I, I, to me, I couldn't see any real filth except for down in the basement. Now, down in the basement is where everybody originally was sleeping. The three boys, Summer, and the parents. All right. Getting to the basement was really, really odd to me. When you walk into the kitchen, okay, you see the table. Beyond the table, it looks like a long countertop, okay? But if you go around this countertop, Look under it, and there are stairs that go down into the basement. Really, really strange area to have a basement, like in the middle of the house. <clears throat> and uh, Chris and Madonna had to go down there because they had to film all of that, and it looked really... I know I have a hard time. Well, of course, I have a hard time with stairs anyway. <clears throat> but go down these stairs into this basement. On the left side, there's the parents' bed. I think it was just a mattress, but they've got another big screen TV down there. Then you go to the right, and there's another area, which is considered Summer's bedroom. It's just another part of the basement where they have a mattress. Just a mattress. 
and a black uh, shelving unit that you usually get from Walmart, you know, those metal shelving units. And on there, they've got games, uh, summer's toys, a gaming system with a TV, I think, right there. And <clears throat> that's all that's in that room. Very stark. There's nothing in there except that metal shelf and the bed. And the bed was a mess. Uh, it, I, I didn't see any sheets on the bed. I just saw a mess of blankets and stuff. Very, very unkempt. Oh, it was just horrible looking at it. it those conditions... The boys were sleeping down there originally. Now, CPS has been involved with this family prior to her disappearance. So, apparently when she disappeared, they came to the house, made some recommendations, told them that the boys had to sleep upstairs, which is why the bunk beds are up in the living room. Something happened between that time, Summer's disappearance, and last week. Because last week, CPS came in and removed the boys from the home. We don't know why. Uh, I did some research on Tennessee, uh, you know, child welfare and all that. And the main reasons they would take the children out of the home would be if they were in imminent danger if they were being neglected or abused, if one of the parents had a long prison sentence previously. So, your guess is as good as mine. Um, her friend Allie has made allegations about her hitting the kids, abusing the kids, uh, Family members of Don's were concerned. We think, I think it might have been a family member that actually called Child Welfare Services on them. But so, as you can see, this is a very convoluted case. Very convoluted. The possibilities are endless. Um, YouTube and Facebook are just attacking the parents, okay? Don and his religious rants, making questionable statements like, we'll see Summer in the resurrection, you know? It's almost like he's resigned to the fact that she's gone, she's gone far, far away, and she's not alive anymore. It's these things that have been making them suspect in people's eyes. Which I understand. And it, 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 it's been gnawing at me, okay? Everybody knows about Elizabeth. But I knew where Elizabeth was. You know, her mother took her, and she was with her mother. She was somewhat safe. Hopefully. I don't know. But, you know, anything with children really, really gets to me. And this case has really, um, really upset me and... Anytime I see a case where a child has been kidnapped, uh, Kaylee Anthony's case was really a mess. That really got to us. My husband and I were so distraught over Kaylee because of her mother lying to the police. You know, said she did something to that child. And yes, she did. She got away with it because Jose Baez was a good attorney. But yeah. So please, please, if you live in the Hawkins County area in Tennessee, anywhere in Tennessee, anywhere near Tennessee, if you think you've seen this child or seen any suspicious activity during that time, please call the TBI at 1-800-FIND-TBI. This child needs to be found. We want her home safe and sound. If she can't be safe and sound, at least we need to bring her home to put her to rest. 
So everybody, please play for summer. And I'll see you next time. Bye.